What's going on YouTube? It's Mid40s Gamer here, coming at you with some more Elden Ring content. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to complete the box side quest so you don't have to spend your hard-earned runes on your custom tailoring needs. And not to mention, having a personal tailor makes you feel kind of special like Kim Kardashian or the Duchess of Cambridge. The steps of this quest are in a heavy lift, and box locations follow you throughout the normal story progression. So let's get ready to learn about a zipper foot and a hook and bobbin, tell Melina we aren't sure what you put in our cryo slush, and get after it. Our story begins in Limgrave at the Agia Lake north side of Grace, and as you can see from the map footage, this location is among the first few sites of Grace you'll come across in your journey into the lands between. Once you reach this location, assuming that you've progressed far enough to unlock Torrent, you can take in the sights for a bit as you stroll to the road and summon your trusty steed in order to head east from this location for about 150 meters until you begin hearing a strange voice calling out to you in the distance. For those of you just starting out, Torrent will be automatically awarded to you by Melina after visiting three sites of grace. Once you hear the voice, you can take a sharp turn off the road and look for an area that's pretty far off the natural lines of drift. After passing a handful of sheep, Bach is actually the one speaking, and is cursed by an illusion to live out his remaining days in this tree-like form. You'll notice a small reddish tree that moves when he talks, and in order to free Bach, you can just simply hit the tree with your weapon. Doing so will reveal Bach's true form, which resembles a cross between Gollum from Lord of the Rings and one of those late night pickups at the bar after drinking 15 White Claws. After a brief conversation, Bach will explain that he was exiled by his demi-human brethren, and he's quite afraid to go back to confront them. This demi-human NPC has spent his existence honing his talents that didn't really align with the demi-human culture, which is the primary reason he was exiled and turned into a tree. After exhausting all his dialogue at this location, Bach will point you in the direction of the coastal cave, which as you can see from the map footage isn't a far ride from your starting point at the first step. After descending to the beachhead and tracing the cliff face, you'll finally discover the coastal cave which stands out like a sore thumb. The cave is actually set in the northern wall of the cliff face and has a rather large pile of driftwood near it with a few demi-humans mulling around as makeshift guards. Once you arrive, the cave is not well lit, so make sure you have a torch or a lantern on hand, which are items that can be easily purchased from the merchants. After passing through the mouth of the cave, you'll find Bach near the side of Grace in the prone position looking like 10 miles of bad road, and after talking with him, he'll try to wave you off by saying that you'll be beaten to a pulp if you continue on any further. After exhausting all his dialogue, which isn't much at this point in the quest, we'll need to head inside the cave and prove Bach wrong by DDTing a small band of demi-humans before engaging in a mini-boss battle against two demi-human chiefs. We need to do this to recover Bach's sewing needle and tailoring tools for the rest of the quest. This mini-boss fight isn't rocket science, but it's not easy either, since you can be easily swarmed by ads while trying to engage the chiefs. The good news is, is that there's a summon sign right before entering into this fight, which allows you to bring Old Knight Istvan to your side to even out the odds. After making short work of the demi-human bosses, you can grab up the tailoring tools and head back up to the cave entrance to return them to Bach. After returning to the entrance and engaging Bach in some idle chit-chat, you'll be given the option to give him back his stolen tailoring tools. Once you return the items, he's quite thankful for their return, and he goes on to explain that he's always dreamt of being a seamstress like his mother. Bach's mother was once a master seamstress, and these two uncommon demi-humans were very close until she passed away, and he inherited her sewing kit. By the end of this closing dialogue, Bach makes it known that he'd rather whip up something fabulous than lay down and die in this moldy cave. The next location you'll run into Bach is Laerna of the Lakes at the lake-facing cliff side of Grace. And as you can see from the map footage, it's just past Stormvale Castle to the north. It's not necessary to have cleared Stormvale Castle in order to reach this side of Grace, since there is a route that takes you past the castle on the eastern side. When you first arrive at this side of Grace, Bach may not be present, but will become visible after resting at the site. After another small conversation, he pledges his tailoring skills to you for free and for as long as you like. Our next pit stop for this quest is going to be the Church of Vows, and as you can see from the map footage, the church is located in Laren of the Lakes at the top of a plateau on the eastern landmass. 
This area can be discovered by either using a way gate in the Academy of Rea Lucaria or by simply following the roadways on the eastern landmass northwest of the Artishak. While we can stop and chat with Muriel, the Tootsie Pop-eating turtle, for some sorceries or incantations, our objective lies in the lone chest just beyond him where we'll discover the golden tailoring tools and the golden sewing needle which Bach can use to alter the appearance of higher-end demigod armor sets. Following the Church of Vows, the next box we'll need to check is located at the East Rea Lucaria Gate side of Grace, and as you can see from the map footage, this side of Grace is located to the northeast of the Academy. This area can be reached fairly easy by passing Caria Manor and hopping over the ravine to the east and up through the Bellum Church, or it can also be reached through the Academy if you have the key to utilize its gates. After talking to Bach here, there isn't much that can be done, and you can't quite hand him the golden sewing equipment just yet. But what you can do at this side of Grace is have a conversation with Melina about Bach. This isn't a necessary step to complete Bach's quest, but we figured we'd mention it in the event you wanted the complete dialogue for the quest. As much as we love talking to Melina, we'll jump past her dialogue and let you experience it for yourself while we direct you to the next area that you'll meet Bach. As you can see from the aerial footage, the next target location we'll be looking to close in on is the Altus Highway Junction, which is roughly 500 meters northeast of the Lift of Dectus atop the Altus Plateau. At this point for us in Bach's storyline, General Radon is no more, and we've purchased his full armor set from the Lady of Fingers within the Round Table Hold. Having this godlike armor in our inventory, as well as the golden tailoring tools, has opened up a brand new line of dialogue options. That being said, with those parameters met, this location offers a ton of dialogue, as well as the opportunity to hand over the golden sewing equipment to your personal tailor. As mentioned earlier, these golden items will allow Bach to make alterations to the demigod style armor, and while we could lengthen this video by leaps and bounds by including all the dialogue, we'll let you experience his unfolding thoughts and storyline on your own. All that being said, we'll head to a rather out-of-the-way location within Mount Gelmir, and as you can see from the map footage, the area of interest is the Craftsman Shack, which is just an abandoned shack along the southern edge of the volcano. You can reach this location by traveling around the volcano starting from the ravine to the west of Wyndham Ruins, passing through Seethwater Terminus, and heading around the lava lake. The reason for this track is really because Box Quest will branch out from this point forward to three possible outcomes. The outcome we've chosen to take you through is the best outcome for you and this odd tailor, which is to recover the Your Beautiful Prattling Pate from the village overrun by demi-humans, and to use it to tell him that he's beautiful at his next location, so that he remains available for alterations in the future. Once this rather important quest item is recovered, we can wrap up this storyline with a nice neat bow by traveling to the East Capital Rampart, which is Bach's final location, based on the ending that we decided to move forward with. And as you can see from the map footage, this particular spot is within the walls of the royal capital. From here, we'll use the prattling pate, which comes out as the voice of Bach's late mother, triggering a dialogue that will land us the good ending to this rather long quest revolving around this exiled tailor. You're beautiful. The other direction you could take in this instance, as far as this quest is concerned, is to give him a larval tear which will move him to the chamber of Queen Renala. There you'll see Bach rebirthed anew as a human and he won't respond when talked to. After resetting again, the quest line will end, proving that the grass isn't always greener on the other side, it's just a different shade of green. If you don't choose either of these options, he can be found dead within the Rea Lucaria Grand Library, ending the quest line. Well folks, it looks like we're coming to the end of another Elden Ring video as I polish off the last of this Warhead flavored ghost energy drink, which tastes a little like it was poured from heaven directly onto my tongue. All of us here at Mid-40s Gamer would like to take this time to personally thank you for watching, and if you haven't done so already, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon so you don't miss out on any new Mid-40s Gamer content. And if you aren't too busy wondering why people can't get goosebumps on their face, leave us a comment in the comment section and let us know how we're doing. So until next time, just remember, kangaroos keep growing until they die, there are more than 70 species of mushrooms that glow in the dark, and as always, good hunting.